Benazir Bhutto's public and personal life has been marked by tragedy, triumph, and scandal. My colleague Ann Curry, who sat down with Mrs. Bhutto twice in the last several months, is here now with more on her life and legacy. Ann, good evening. Good evening, Lester. In fact, knowing that Bhutto was at risk during our interview, we asked her about the possibility that she would be killed. Difficult to ask then, but haunting now. Some of what you're about to hear has never before been broadcast. I love the people of Pakistan. I have lived for the people of Pakistan. I entered Pakistan, uh, I entered the politics of Pakistan for the people of my country. They look towards me with hope, victory and defeat. I can't say what the end will be. All I can say is that I will do my best to serve my people by helping them in a transition to democracy. Harvard and Oxford educated young Benazir Bhutto didn't intend to become a politician, saying later it was her destiny as the daughter of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, who in the late 1970s was Pakistan's first popularly elected leader. He was executed by the military and she was imprisoned for five years, but rose to become the first woman elected prime minister in the Muslim world in 1988. The day of the dictator is over. Corruption accusations forced her from office. She claimed they were politically motivated. Still, she was elected a second time in 1993. But new charges of corruption drove her from office again and later into exile with her three children. Though away for eight years, she never lost hope for Pakistan's future, she said in an interview with NBC News last summer. I believe my arrival in Pakistan will galvanize the moderate forces and the democratic forces. This past October, she returned home, greeted by hundreds of thousands of her supporters, and this. A suicide bomber attacked her motorcade, killing 170. Three days later, Budo consoled mourners in her home. Emotionally exhausted, she again spoke to NBC News. What if you die here in this effort? What if your life is taken from you and the suicide bombers are successful? Will it have been worth it? Well, everybody has to die one day. I certainly hope I don't die. I remember my father when I saw him. He told me I never saw any of my children married in, my last, in the last day of his life. He said, I never saw any of my grandchildren. And I've always thought that one day I would like to see my grandchildren and to see my uh, children married. So of course I pray not only for my own life, but for the life of all my supporters. But will it have been worth it to have lost your life here for this cause? I have a choice to keep silent and to allow the extremists to do what they are doing. Or I have a choice to stand up and say, this is wrong, and I'm going to try and save my country. And I've taken the second choice. I hope God will protect me. But at the end of the day, I can't keep quiet when there's a threat to take over my country. Buddha believed that threat came from the same Islamic extremists who are now suspected of having a hand in her death, Lester. She did not seem like a woman afraid. And Anne, we're joined here by our colleague Richard Engel, our Mideast Bureau Chief, who's here in New York on the holidays. You both have seen how accessible, in fact, the last time you two were together was in Islamabad. You saw how accessible she was then. Was there a sense that it was inevitable that it was going to end this way for Benazir Bhutto? She certainly took a lot of risks. And when I heard the news, I, I was not surprised at all. She had to go out in these public rallies. This is election season right now. And because of her alliance in the past and because of her alliance with the United States in particular, she needed to galvanize public support. So in a degree, she took a lot of risks, but she probably had to do them. And I overheard you guys talking. You talked about this at the time. We did. We got together. We were looking Not at each surprised. other. Not surprised. And we were saying, you know, my goodness, I mean, the risk she's taking. Uh, and then she insists on being here and staying here, even after that first suicide attack uh, in what, in, on October uh, 18th. What happened today was what they failed to do in October. That time, there was just a suicide bomber who attacked her armored convoy. This time, the gunman rushed up fired shots at her, made sure she was dead, and then detonated the and, suicide and device. So they didn't want to make any, any mistakes this time. That's right. And the Pakistan government, she said, told her of more than one attempt on her life that was being planned after that attack. So she knew there was a constant threat 
in not just in one city, but in cities that she was planning to go. Someone was getting the intelligence, she said, of what her plans were. And, and Richard, let me ask, you've spent a lot of time in that part of the world. We saw some of the protests immediately after today aimed at Musharraf. Does this blow back on him at some point, and to what extent? It, it certainly does, and it casts the entire political situation into turmoil. After months of martial law and questions about the elections, the process seemed to be back on track with the elections coming up very soon. Now all of that is in question. New calls for boycotts, talk about poten potentially postponing the elections, questions, did Musharraf put enough security on the ground? Benazir Bhutto's supporters said that he never did. So it certainly casts a lot of uh, questions about the political And for the U.S., the issue here is a stable government of the fight against al-Qaeda. And Anne, she was r rather unabashedly pro-U.S. on that front. She was very pro-U.S. and she was extremely pro-democracy. She was very firm and very angry at the Musharraf government for imposing martial law. Uh, and, and in fact, it, it strained their relations dramatically. She also did something very interesting even before she went back to Pakistan, she named three high-ranking members of the Musharraf government and said, not the government, but these high-ranking members of the government had ties to some of these extremists that trouble the United States government. Well, good conversation. And we'll see you tomorrow morning on today. Richard, good to have you here in New York. Thanks so much.